Hi, I'm Will from Tested. I'm Norm from Tested. Norm, you have a ball in your hand. Just one ball, don't worry, not gonna fushigate. it. Shake it. No. Shake it. Shake it real hard? Shake it. Like a baby? Shake it, no, oh, not no, like, no, no, don't no, shake the baby. No. Like a robot. Like a robot. You can shake it harder than that. Shake it harder. I'm shaking it real hard. Oh, there it goes. Wow. It's the Sphero. Uh, yeah, so what this is, uh, we saw these guys at CES uh, actually the last two years, no. and it is a little tiny robot inside the ball with a bunch of gyroscopes and accelerometers and stuff like that. Uh, and the robot basically drives the ball around like a hamster in one of those freedom wheels. So it's just a plastic balls. ball. Plastic ball, hard plastic ball, it's waterproof. Robot drives the ball, mm -hmm. you drive the robot. That's exactly right. Um, so we've had this for about a week now. Uh, it, it's. There's a lot of novelty here because it's something that you don't normally see every day. Like seeing the ball drive itself around the floor, yeah. pretty cool. Uh, however, uh, there's not a whole lot to do with just one. No. Unless you have some other things around. Uh, right. So let me let me show how, how this works basically. You have an iPhone app. Right, the iPhone app or the iPad app. Or the iPad app, yeah. Works fine. Um, you have a control dial there. Yeah, so the this is basically an analog control stick. Now before you start driving, the key is to put two fingers on the stick. And basically what that does is gives you this blue dot. All that, all that's doing is orienting the back of the ball to your, to where you're looking. So, so think of that as tail, as tail light. Exactly. So that turns off once you get going. Uh, but from there, pushing forward on the stick will make it go forward. Pushing back on the yeah. stick will make it go back. Now it, it doesn't corner like it's on rails. No. Um, it has definitely. You have to think about momentum as you're using this. It's almost like driving like a go kart or something like that that kind of drifts a little bit. Because you know when you tell it to start turning right. It doesn't actually stop and then turn right. It just kind of gradually makes you go into a rightward curve. Mm -hmm. um, and it's easy to control once you kind of get the knack of it, but it definitely does not, it's not like a magical kind of magnetic ball where you have a ball on the table and you're just- right. You don't have one-to-one -one control. Exactly. And also it doesn't go particularly fast. We uh, didn't clock it, but it'll, it'll scurry around. Slow walking speed yeah, is Yeah, slow walking speed, not, not even as fast as like an excited real chipmunk. Yeah, no, no. Uh, definitely slower than the dog. Now, the places that this really shines, and they probably don't recommend for use as this, but I have a small dog. Chloe Bananas thinks that this thing is inhabited by demons. Yeah. Uh, she likes to play with it because none of the rest of her toys move on their own, and it kind of shakes while it's in her mouth. Uh, you can't really control it when the dog's playing with it at all. Uh, basically, the best you can do, because she can keep up with it much faster than it so can So you're go. saying just as good as giving her a tennis ball? Uh, if you cram some stuff inside a tennis ball, okay. maybe. It's, it's the fact that it doesn't behave like a normal ball that makes it right. really interesting to her. Uh, it's the same thing as putting a big ball inside, a, a small ball inside of a big ball. Same, same and it's applies. dog safe that like, Chloe did not break the shell. Yeah, she can get it all the way in her mouth. Now if you have a big dog that has a lot of jaw pressure, like a Rottweiler or something like that, obviously that's not going to go particularly well. It's pretty sturdy, um, and I couldn't pop it open. It's sealed, yeah, yeah. I mean it's sealed with glue and, and, and magic of some kind. Um, so there's a bunch of stuff you can do with this. I'm just going to run through the high points right here, but I mean basically the driving is the key thing. There's a couple of other apps that come with it. They have APIs as well so people can develop third party apps. There's one that lets you draw, so you can draw a like... Path. Okay. Draw a path, and then it'll it'll follow that path. Okay. It's not going to do it because it's in Norm's hands right now. Um, there's also stuff. I'm going to go out of this. Uh, there's also stuff that will let you uh, like put up a camera so you can shoot with the iPhone Video, camera. Right. What's going on? I found that really hard to do because it's hard to watch. You kind of want to watch the ball in the real life and not watch the screen, so you end up with a lot of out of uh, yeah. you know uh, the ball out of the actual shot. It doesn't actually follow. The, it doesn't have a camera inside the ball nope. either, which would be pretty cool. Although with the solid shell, I don't know how you would do that exactly. Also, the colors do change. Yeah, the colors do change, so I can do that right now. Um, I'm going to uh, go back out here. There's a bunch of different apps, like I said, for this. Well, this is the this is the the kind of main one. This is what you use to upgrade the firmware and stuff like that. It's just called Sphero. I'm gonna make it pink for you, Norm. Um, so the Sphero handles pretty well on different services. Um, I've used carpet it on, is best. Carpet, carpet is pretty good. Low pile carpet is best. Mm -hmm. uh, concrete works okay, surprisingly. Thick shag carpet works pretty well. Basically, the limiting factor seems to be can the ball get traction on the surface, right. and it has some knobs and ridges and stuff like that. Uh, it went downstairs fine. Hardwood was no problem. Uh, How about slopes? Uh, it's okay up to a certain point if it's a. a a frictiony enough surface. So, like, if you get a good run at it, you can use an iPad as a ramp. Mm -hmm. If you want to go up longer it's expensive ramps, ramp. well, you know, it's an expensive ball. Yeah. Um, if you want to run up less uh, longer surfaces, you need something with a little more friction, like a rubber mat or some carpet or something like that on it. Um, it it's it's a hundred. It can get stuck in corners. It and does get chairs. Stuck. Yeah. I mean. It doesn't do well when it gets up on the edge and the robot can't tell which way is up or down and what it yeah. needs to do to get away. You can usually kind of re recalibrate it, reset its axis 
and get back to the point that you can back away. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky. I found myself picking it up a lot. Uh, yeah, or nudging close. with your foot, or yeah. you just release the hounds, basically. Also, it charges uh, wirelessly. It's an inductive charger, mm -hmm. uh, just like your Sonic Care toothbrush or something like that. Yep. It takes about three hours to charge. Uh, I was able to use it for a little bit under an hour without running the battery all the way down. I got bored before the power. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the knock. Uh, I got bored, Norm got bored. Chloe Bananas would have played with this until she was unconscious, basically. Yep. Or until the robot died inside. So a great $130 accessory for your dog. Well, dogs are expensive. Accessories for your dog are expensive, too. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. I, I'm really excited for what's coming next from these guys. And also, if you want to spend 260 bucks, it's pretty fun to have two and race them around. Uh, for Tested, I'm Will. I'm Norm. See you guys next time. Spiro.